you. What's going on? What are you doing? I'll call the police. We are the police. Special proclamation issued under the auspices of the Chocolate Prohibition Act. We hereby give notice that as from 0900 today, it will be a criminal offence to buy, sell, eat, store or manufacture chocolates in any form, milk or plain. Any person doing so will incur a £6,000 fine and face up to five years imprisonment. Smudger, it's true. They have banned it. It's scare tactics. How can anyone ban chocolates? Huntley, you look like you've seen a ghost. Myrtle, look. The chocolate ban, it's happened. And the only exemptions will be those with special medical needs on prescription. And Dave, who's... Dave! That's vandalism! So? Dave! That's so over! You may think that, Myrtle, but I'm just asserting my right to free speech. Tell me this isn't happening. Come on, Huntley. We'll go check this out. We know who to ask. will start swelling up. I'll, I'll call you back later. Bye. Have you seen the chocolate ban notices? Well, not only that, they've got special police out there raiding all the shops. Special police? Well, my cousin Beryl's off license. They just went in, took all the chocolates and her friend's corner shop and the big supermarket at Hadley Cross. That's it. Our lives are over. Well, no one's touching my shop. Now relax, both of you. All right, so they've raided a couple of places. It's just to put the frighteners on. They can't do it everywhere. That would be impossible. Wrong something, do you? Come on, then! See any special police here? Well, then, business as usual, I think. Now, decisions, decisions. So much chocolate, so little time. All the same, boys, you be careful. I don't want anything to happen to my best customers. Ah, retail therapy. You know, Smudger, you have all the luck. How so? Well, firstly, a lifetime of chocolate consumption, and you got no fillings. It's all in the mouth technique. Chew, roll, suck, chew. Oi, you two. Am I going to have to wait here all day? I'm not doing it. I've been good once already today. Sorry. And don't talk with your mouth full. Two chocolate eclairs, one caramel eclair, three florentines, one gateau, two drinking chocolates, three espresso, one double mocha with extra whipped cream. 286 shoe buns, three fillings, chocolate, chocolate truffle and chestnut. You beat Mr Puckle's record. <laughs> Dustman, on a Wednesday. Just 
crisp as well, by the look of it. But you can't do that! Mr. Pucker will have his lawyers onto this. Lawyers? How sweet. Good for you. Good for you. Five years imprisonment. It's supposed to be persuading people, not banging them up. More here, Doctor. Prescription quota guidelines, fat camp referral guidelines, and a chocolate abuse hotline. GPs have got to report anyone suspicious. Just about go along with those taxes on fizzy drinks and crisp. But... Oh, and we've got to put up this poster. <gasps> Let's think of this logically. Think of all the thousands of sweet shops and supermarkets up and down the country. They'd need an army of police, loads of trucks and lorries to take it away. Yes, and, and people would hide it, so they'd need special detectors, I suppose. So I say relax, chill, don't panic. You three, come against the wall. Huntley? Yes? Permission to panic! Hey! You two! Stop! Stop where you are! I said stop now! Stop! Split up. Looks like the only place will be safe. Smudge at you and your fat yap. Oh, Michael. Uh, this one's yours, I think. They gave us two by mistake. What's this? Well, it's a disposal sack. Private households have until five o'clock to hand over any remaining chocolate. It all seems terribly well organized. Come on, Chloe. Out they go. Oh, one, two, three, out with those horrible, sicky things. What are they? Horrible, sicky things. There, all gone. Doesn't that feel good? Well, we think this band's a brilliant idea, don't we, Pumpkin? Yes, Daddy. I mean, I admit, even we've eaten the odd bit of chocolate in the past, but when you think of the damage it does to... <laughs> well, obviously it's an emotional moment. Good for you. Hey! What's your name? Um, Jason Moore. Put over here. Hands in the air. Now, I've got a miner here. It's past the deadline. You know what the penalty is now for eating chocolate? I made a mistake. I meant to grab a muesli bar, but I was in a hurry and I grabbed the wrong one. Didn't stop you eating it, did it? It was disgusting. I hate chocolate. Never eat it normally, swear. We'll soon find out. Officer? Open your mouth. Wider. 
The years of abuse never fail to leave their mark. Heard of the chocolate dentist? A cocker anchor? Yes. Where boys go who neglect their teeth, who have a backlog of fillings, so he has to drill fast. And without anesthetic. No fillings. You've had your first and last warning, Jason Moore. Now get out of here. Who would have thought they would actually do it? Well, don't blame me, I didn't vote for them. You didn't vote at all. Well, they're all as bad as each other. That's what half the country said, and look where we are now. I thought they were bluffing about this ban. We all thought they were bluffing. Kylie, stop that. Christmas was months ago. happened to the cafe, Lord knows. Mr. Puckle said we'll just have to do savoury. Bread, bagels, pretzels, but not salted. That'll be next, apparently. You're back early. They raided the cafe. And they're just about to raid here. What? It's past the deadline. They're on the ground floor and they've got detectives. It's all right. I've just thrown everything out. We haven't got any other chocolate, have we? Uncle Bernie! Why didn't we eat it at Christmas when we had the chance? Oh, I said we should save it for special. We can't let them have this. Where did you say they were? Ground floor, Mrs. Perry's. How long does it take to do 17 floors? Good afternoon. Ah, you're interested in cookery. Well, I've just had a couple of very interesting items come in. This uh, first edition of Throgmorton's right. Guide to Edible yeah. Fungi. Oh, and this history of couscous, now out of print. It's a little dry. The uh, book, that is, not the couscous. Though couscous can be, depending how long you steam. Check every section. The woman in that last shop hid them under witchcraft. Are you looking for any uh, topic in particular? All books and reference materials on chocolate and confectionery come under the chocolate prohibition order. And not to be handed over immediately. Chocolate? <laughs> Heaven forbid. No, no books on chocolate here. No, sir. I'm allergic, you see. History's clear. I tried it once when I was small, and my neck swelled up like a watermelon. I was in hospital for a week, on a drip. I mean, I just have to look at a piece of chocolate. I, I come out in these terrible... Have you finished? If you happen to see or hear of anyone peddling offensive material, phone this hotline? Absolutely. Straight away. Good for you. Good for you. You're doing a grand job. We have reason to believe that chocolate is present on your premises. Open the door! Open the door! I won't warn you again! got a positive reading on our detector from this apartment. Go ahead. Search everything. Cheer up, Mike. You don't understand, Mum. You've never understood. You wouldn't, being a doctor. I do, actually. A little of what you like does no harm at all in moderation. But there's a ban on. There's nothing we can do about it. Just have to get on with our lives. Oh, not the chocolate midgets. Mike, there are times in life when you just have to let go. Sorry, it must have been a mistake. So, uh, can I invoice you for the door? If you see anyone or hear anyone abusing, we expect you to report it on this hotline. Good for you. Good for you. The controversial chocolate ban came into force today. Across the country, chocolate factories closed down, and shops and supermarkets, along with domestic households, handed over their existing chocolate supplies to disposal squads. 
A spokesman for the government said the new legislation had been widely welcomed and the operation for collection and disposal had gone smoothly and without protest. In some quarters there has been criticism of the lack of consultation about the ban, but the Prime Minister, in a party political broadcast to be shown later tonight, had this to say. Yes, this ban was introduced quickly because the Good For You Party was elected to take firm and decisive action to make our nation a tidier, politer and healthier place. Look at the fall in graffiti and litter and look at the rise in politeness levels. Up to 82% in the last six months, making us now the third politest nation after Finland and Denmark. Have a milky moment, they said. Go on, just for a laugh. So I did. It was great, all gooey and chewy and sticky. It was fantastic. But when I stopped, that's when the bugs came. And the only thing that would stop them was more chocolate. So I had to get more and more and more. Next thing, I'm cutting lessons, stealing from my mum, raiding off licenses. I mean, it was only for a laugh. <laughs> Want no chocolate bar? I don't want no chocolate bar. Keep my balls teeth in a jar. Keep my balls teeth in a jar. Sugar oh and no, Frankie Crawley. Deep breaths, Hunter. You're not gonna be sick. Good morning, guys. The jury's out on that. Lighten up. You ought to join the Young Pioneers. There's nothing like spearing trash to start today. It gives you a real buzz. I'd rather stick my finger in a socket. We're recruiting this afternoon. Come along. Oh, drat. I got my yoga class. And I've got my therapist. You don't know what you're missing. I don't want no fizzy drink. Hey, I lead. Anyway, as I was saying, nothing's forever. I mean, it won't be long before we'll be able to vote. And there's thousands of kids who'll want to kick this lot out. Yes, but there are loads of funky crawlies, too. Smudger. Look. Mrs. B, are you all right? They came just after you left. So much for those taekwondo classes. Well, there were six of them. Oh, Smudger, our shrine, and they've desecrated it. All that's left now is newspapers, and rubber bands and greetings cards, birthdays, bar mitzvah, driving test, bereavement. Oh, and goodie bars. Goodie bars? Official government snack bars. That's all we're allowed to sell now. I've got boxes of them down in the cellar. Come on. You may as well be my official taster. My Harry was a great believer in planning for emergencies. Nuclear war, smallpox, the ice cap melting. Well, Mrs. B, we held on to this stuff when we sold the grocery shop. You had a grocery shop? In Chestnut Lane. Old Box, one of those super stores now. Oh, that was some fight. <laughs> Demos, petitions, storm council meetings. When they came to knock it down, Pitched a tent in the road. Should have seen us, me and my Harry, in our sleeping bags, being scooped up in the air by that bulldozer. Oh, made a stand. That was the important thing. Over to you now. Be completely objective. They look like chocolate. Hey, Huntley, room for hope yet? Mm. Acceptable appearance. No bouquet to speak of, though. <laughs> Boys, I'm so sorry. <laughs> what was that? Chocolate-free chocolate. Chocolate-free chocolate. Chocolate chocolate. chocolate. Extract of tofu, carob, sea kelp, and concentrated alfalfa sprout. <laughs> Oh, maybe you'd like to try the other counter. I'm going to try some of these breads. We've got um, farmhouse, granary cob, pumpernickel, and sourdough. Come on, three chef. I'm stumped, Mr. Puckle. Not only is chocolate out, it's any chocolate related products as well. And sugar, butter, cream, they're all hard to get hold of already. Mm. They'll be the next to go. Maybe it'll pick up for afternoon tea. I could try a tea and buttered toast special. Or rather a tea and toast with low-fat spread special. 
<laughs> Seeking positive as ever, Ron. Now, we have spent years building up a loyal clientele. They are not going to turn their backs on us now. month we welcome a very important visitor who will be telling you all about the new chocolate detection unit and how we as a school can help in the fight against confectionery abuse. Now it's very important that we all pay particular attention to this gentleman. He is the Deputy Area Chief of Police, Chief Superintendent Darius Crow, and I'm sure he will join us in a moment. But as a special treat, there will be a detection dog display in the playground afterwards. Super. And you had this how long? Ever since Somalia last month. The blackouts too. I was um, doing a report for Newsbreak and uh, our food convoy got ambushed by militia. A stinger exploded right above my head. Really? What I'll do is refer you Actually, to... Actually, there is something that stops it. No? Uh? Chocolate. Chocolate. Mm. We were stranded in the desert with the usual rations, water, biscuits, chocolate bar, and the moment I ate the chocolate, it stopped. Really? Maybe it triggers the endorphins. Um, I don't know. So, you're telling me that your post-traumatic stress syndrome was alleviated by chocolate? Mm. Honest. Milligrams. Thanks. Um, how many times a day? Once. <clears throat> right. Standing room only, out there. Oh, this is ridiculous. What? This whole ban, it's way over the top. I mean, chocolate can actually be good for you. It's been proven medically recently. Was it? In fact, I'm sure I saw a report somewhere. My, how times have changed. A generation ago, when I was on the beat, we were called pigs. Kids hated us. It was war, vandalism, graffiti, delinquents everywhere. Now, at long last, it seems like we're on the same side. Kids have grown up. You're caring, constructive, community-minded. In a word, you're sensible. You young people realize there's nothing cool about breaking the law. Now, as you know, our government has passed a new law prohibiting the sale and consumption of chocolate. Long overdue, in my opinion. Isn't that right, Mrs. Spring? Absolutely. Absolutely. And as with all new laws, there will be attempts to flout it. So all of you, be on your guard. Because you are the front line of the battle. You are the eyes and ears. If you see anything or anyone suspicious, you... Seems our dog demonstration has started early. That particular breed can smell up to 800 yards. Chocolate Labrador. Jason Moore, is there something you've got to say? Uh, no, miss. It seemed like a sort of joke. Do share it with us, I insist. Well, I... I just said the dog should be a chocolate Labrador. 
It's in the timing, I think. See me afterwards. Well, that's quite all right, Mrs. Spring. It would be a shame if we couldn't have a little joke. So what do you think's happened today? Same time early, probably. To write out, I promise not to eat chocolate in assembly a thousand times by tomorrow. <laughs> he won't be back tomorrow. Or the day after. What do you mean? They've taken him. Taken him? Where? For re-education. Re-education? It's some centre, they say. I don't know where it is or how long they go for. All I know is, once they come out, they never want to see another chocolate as long as they live. It's all hard, Derek. Urban myth, like alligators and sewers, that kind of thing. If you're caught eating this stuff, or even in possession, they'll come for you, at home even. Sometimes in the middle of the night. That's what I've heard. Someone died? Derek, tell Mum I'll be late tonight, will you? I've got a date. How romantic. Told her to bring a bin liner? Yes, as a matter of fact. She's a new recruit. We're going to do a once around Queen's Park and then go for a smoothie. Hey, Derek, is he really your brother? Are you sure there wasn't a mix-up at the hospital or something? <laughs> Wendy, I found that report. April's Journal of Medicine, University of California. In a recent trial, volunteers were given 25 milligrams of chocolate or bread. Blood clotting platelet activity was then tested afterwards. The chocolate eaters had significantly lower risks of clotting and concluded that the flavonoids in the chocolate had heart-protecting properties. I ought to bring this up with a health authority. I wouldn't do that if I were you. There ought to be a proper debate about it. Doctors are the last people they want to listen to. You're banging your head against a brick wall. We said no, Mr. <laughs> Burley. I am not prescribing chocolate for whiplash. Not now, not ever. You know what I miss more than anything? The sound of chocolate. The sound of chocolate. As well as the taste, obviously. The rip of the wrapper, the crinkle of the silver foil, the snap as you tear off a chunk. You two. You're like the living dead. So chocolate's been banned. Get over it. You're like the biggest chocoholic in the school. Not anymore. Has it occurred to you that they might have a point? It rots the teeth, makes you fat, and it's a waste of money. It was all a great con trick and we fell for it. <laughs> well, pardon me for growing. Your mum's here, Myrtle. Correction, a mystery man. What are you doing? I've never seen your dad before. So? Well, it's a unique event. I'm just curious. He works away from home a lot. I told you, in Brussels. Hi, darling. Hi, Dad. Hello, Mr. Jackson. Is this, uh... No, um, look, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. Jason Moore, I make up the famous three. Listen, you couldn't sneak some chocks back the next time. I beg your pardon? Belgian chocolates. Heard they're kicking. Oh, sorry I'm late. Hello, Mr. Jackson. Pleased to meet you, Frankie Crawley. Oh, yes, Frankie. Good. Hop in. All set. I just need to drop by the Pioneer's office first and pick up those new hats. I miss milky moments. Caramel halos, Brazil bars. Chocker bubbles, rock. Who wants some chocolate now? Are you serious? Fellow Fields, Unit 13. Fellow Fields. Hello? Things are looking up. Meet me outside the forum in 10 minutes. Smudger, what's up? I'm not over the phone. Unit 13, posted by someone called Guardian Angel. That's all I know. So why did your system crash? That's what worries me. I mean, they can intercept emails, can't they? Maybe someone was listening in. It crashes all the time. Where did this person say they got the chocolate from? I don't know. Maybe they've been hoarding it somewhere. What if we get caught? We'll be careful. But if we do get caught, I mean, the penalty... Oh. Look! We've got a problem here, and I'm trying to solve it. All you do is throw baboons at me. I, I'm sorry, it's just... Well, I've, I've never been in big trouble before. I mean, 
lines at school being captain at lunch. We're not going to get caught, OK? Now, are you in? <laughs> I'm in. Sorry, Pat. I'm so sorry. Ben Fields estate agent. We came for, you know. No, I don't know. Stuff. Dave, wrong fish. A little bit. Chocolate. You kids are looking for trouble. Now get out of here before I shop you. Should have asked him if he's got any wild geese. I told you, Smudger, you can't trust people you meet in chat rooms. Come on, let's get out of here. Oi! Oi! You two better be able to keep your trap shut. Twenty quid. Just for this lot. Twenty quid a bar. A bar? Keep your voices down. That's for week's pocket money. Plug in, kids. This is the black market. I'm putting my neck on the line here. Now, it's twenty quid a bar. Do you want it or not? Nice doing business with you boys. They've gone. I'm not moving. Huntley? Yeah? Whatever you do, don't look to your right. to admit it, <laughs> but for a second there underneath that van, I got a sort of buzz. <laughs> Just for a moment, mind. Then I continued to wet myself. Pound a chunk. Mm. 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 Solicitor says there is to be no compensation. 
not a penny. We can't go on like this, Mr. Pucker. What are we going to do? My father came here all the way from Vienna in 1939 with ten shillings and one change of underwear to escape tyranny. I'm only glad he is not here to see this. Give it another half an hour on, then lock up. Wendy? It's gone. What's gone? That report. I'm sure. I put it back there after I sent that email to the health authority, I swear. Hang on. It's not here. That email I sent. Did you remember to save it? Yes, it should be here in the personal filing cabinet, but it's not. I don't like this, Wendy. I'll change the locks and computer passwords now. What have you done to yourself? Nothing. What's all that oil? It's nothing. Chocolate? What have you been doing, Jason? Uh, surgery closed half an hour ago. Yes, I'm sorry. It's uh, it's just that I um, <clears throat> you see, I'm off to cover the Good for You Party conference for uh, a couple of days, and uh, well, it's it's just that I might you need a top-up prescription. Yeah, how did you guess? <laughs> <laughs> You're a reporter, aren't you? For Newsbreak. Well, deputy editor mainly. Occasionally, I get to do a piece myself. Yeah, I saw that one on problems with the launch of the euro. Oh. I told them someone was watching. <laughs> Look, um, could you come in a moment? Something's going on that's not right. It all started when I found this report to do with the chocolate ban. Every time she tried to send it, it was deleted. And when she went back to her surgery the following day, the entire file with the report had gone. This government had been trampling on us from the day they were elected. This has got to be made public. But they're not going to let you do anything that's anti-good for you, are they? But this isn't just smear. This is documented facts from a respected GP. Dr. Carol Hunter has the biggest and most oversubscribed practice in the district. She's vice chair of the General Practitioners Council, one son at a local comprehensive, solid, moderate, law-abiding types, not natural activists. Exactly the sort of recruit we need, Martin. Capture the middle ground. Got time for a quick count. Uh... Fred, that's your best Val Noir. I've got one more. Oh, you must save it. It's been three days. I don't do willpower. But th this could go on for months, years. Not if we've got anything to do with it. Mm. Are you out of your mind? Jason, you could have been arrested. I'm sorry. But you could have I... gone to prison. What were you thinking of? So we just do nothing then? That's right, nothing. You just sit tight and you keep your nose clean. We can't do nothing. You told me to stand up to bullies. Don't take a lying down. That's what you said. You get it into your naive head once and for all. You can't beat the system. Who needs chocolate? No, not me. Who needs chocolate? No, not me. Got my vitamins A, B, C. Got my vitamins A, B, C. I don't want no chewing gum. I don't want no chewing gum. Chewing gum. Hey, guys. Check out our new headgear. What does it stand for? Goofy? Don't waste your time, Frankie. They're just jealous. Nice to see you too, Myrtle. <laughs> Thriving retail business, compact kitchen, retaining period features, cooker and refrigerator, stunning lower ground, studio space, ideal for subletting, 
Now, as I was saying... The market's a bit slow at the moment, but with any luck, it'll pick up. Where would you be relocating to? Pebble Mouth. My cousin's got a bungalow. Pebble Mouth. Sea air, rhododendrons, nice class of people. No tearaways, no noisy nightclubs. I've been going there every year since I was three. Linda Haywood. Yeah. Mike Hunter. Yeah. Dave Hooson. Yes. Myrtle Jackson. Raylene Ripple. Yeah. Yes, no, no. Oh, knock off by Sunday. Yes. Yes, no. Derek, are you all right? I'm going whip. Oh, yes. Yes. What are you doing? No. No, don't please. Let me have it, please, Derek. It's empty. No, leave it. It's mine. Derek, I know it's hard. Believe me. No, leave it. <sighs> can't do this. I just can't. Mr. Farmer, if we could be on time with the register. <laughs> he was just playing with it, Mrs. Spring. Derek, come with me, please. He'll be okay. I said, come with me, Derek. <laughs> First Dave, now Derek. Sorry, Smudger, but this is getting scary. What's up? Oh, no. Mrs. B, you can't go. I'm sorry, boys. I, I, I was going to tell you. And please, Mrs. B, we beg of you. This place is like a second home. A heritage site. An institution. One of the seven wonders. You can't do this. We forbid it, don't we, Huntley? Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Bubby, I have a client. If it, is it sorry. convenient? We're having a board meeting. Boys, you're too kind, but what's left for me to stay for now? My business is gone. I'm not going to live off selling goodie bars, am I? It's time to move on. So where are you going? Pebble Mouth. Where's that? On the south coast. They wanted me to go and live there when Harry died. You don't want to go there. It's full of old people. Well, in case you hadn't noticed. Oh, you're not old. You've just got a lot of air miles. Look, if Harry was still around, maybe things would be different, but I'm on my own now. It gets harder. What's the matter with the world, Huntley? Everyone's giving up. Have you ever seen Mrs. Bobby look so down in the dumps? You should see my mum and dad moping around the flat saying, they've wasted their lives. It's so unfair. What's the point of it all? As bad as a couple of teenagers. What? Follow me. You want some stuff? Come this way. Milk plain dark. Hurry up. Are you out of your mind? There might be troopers. 75% pure cocoa. How much? How much you got? Oh, don't waste my time. How much you got? Oh, six months mowing the lawn and sweeping the cuttings. Look, if you're gonna buck me around... Wait. We only live once. We may not get another chance. Well, not here. Are you mad? I just want to look at it. The tunnel is the only safe place, Smudger. I just want to look at it. <laughs> it's sawdust. What? Taste it. Do you mean to tell me that I've just spent 40 quid on sawdust? We've been had. Nope, it's not a dream. I'm stuck with it. Videotape evidence log 23778. Suspect Brian Gibbs apprehended Unit 13 Fellow Fields with hoard of Class A illegal confectionery, 12th of the 4th, 16.35pm. Are we going to have to do this for everyone? Just for the first few days, get those busy bodies of civil liberties off our backs. Wait a minute. Stop the tape. Roll forward. Now, zoom in. Favor the boy on the right. Stop. Why is he familiar?
Yes. That school I went to. Jason someone. I'll check the register. There's a few Jasons. Hollands, Kiriaku, Moore. Jason Moore. That's it. We got a file on him? No. We have now. I've got a great idea. Sawdust, 40 quid. I mean, they must be making a fortune. I'm thinking. You know, this is the I'm worst, thinking. worst, worst, I'm worst, worst day of my life. No, it's not. It's the best. What? What's that they say about it's darkest before the dawn? If today hadn't happened, I wouldn't have had my great idea. Uh, what great idea? We make our own. Our own what? Vegetable lasagna. Chocolate, Huntley. <laughs> we make our own chocolate. No more being ripped off. No more being swindled. We take control of our lives. One small detail. We don't have the faintest idea how to make chocolate and it's breaking the law, remember? That's two small details. <sighs> We've nearly got caught once. I don't want to go there again, OK? Look, there have been loads of stupid rules in the past that people have stood up to. Just because everyone else is giving up hope doesn't mean we have to. I don't know. Oh, come on, Huntley. We've got to do this for our mums and dads, for Mrs Bobby. For Dave, Derek, and everyone. Someone's got to show them that we aren't going to be bullied around. This isn't about chocolate anymore. This is a fight for freedom and justice. Well, actually, it is about chocolate. A lot about chocolate. But freedom and justice as well. Are you in? That's my job. Are you in? Don't even think about it. The answer is no. But, Dad, I wasn't even You are not making chocolate. Chocolate, the definitive guide. <laughs> These any good to you? We've got a proposition for you. How much are you going to make? Just a bet for us and our mates. Promise you'll be careful. The police have ears, eyes and noses everywhere. We're in business. Affirmative. They're in there. Something's going on around here. I want you to hang out with Huntley for a bit. You want me to spy? Where did you get it? I can't say. I think we're being followed. The day of reckoning gets nearer and nearer. The day when we strike at the heart of this tyranny. Freedom! Justice! Bootleg continues next Sunday at the same time, 5 to 6. BBC One's at the Animal Hospital in 45 minutes after a special Antiques Roadshow next.